Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and in this modular arithmetic for cryptography part 4 video, I'll be discussing Euler's torsion function, Euler's theorem and fermat Sittel theorem. So let's get started. Before we talk about Euler's torsion function, we need to understand what is co-prime. If two numbers are co-prime, that means they do not have any factor in common except 1 and the value of GCD of two numbers equals to 1. Torsion function is simply the count of all co-prime numbers to n and we write it as phi n. Table shows torsion function value of 1 to 15 which is basically the count of all co-prime numbers. So let's look at how we calculate torsion function. We can calculate torsion function depending on the number n whether it is a prime number or composite number. Let's look at the case. 1 when n is a prime number. In this case, torsion function phi n is n minus 1. Let's look at some examples. Torsion function of a prime number 5, that is 5 minus 1 equals 4. If you look at the table, that is correct. Another example, torsion function of a prime number 11, 11 minus 1 equals 10. If you look at the table, that is correct. Another example, torsion function of a prime number 13, that is 13 minus 1 equals 12. If you look at the table, that is correct. It is very easy to calculate torsion function of a prime number. Let's look at the case 2. When n is a composite number, then we find its prime factors and calculate torsion function of all prime factors based on the case 1 that is phi n equals n minus 1. Let's look at some examples. Calculate torsion function of a composite number 15. Find its prime factors which are 3 and 5. Find torsion function of 3 and 5 based on the case 1. That is 3 minus 1 times 5 minus 1 equals 8. And if you look at the table, that is correct. However, this method has some limitations. So look at this limitation. Calculate the torsion function of a composite number 9. Find its prime factor which are 3 and 3. Find torsion function of 3 and 3 based on the case 1. That is 3 minus 1 times 3 minus 1 equals 4. But 4 is incorrect. And correct value is 6. We can check it from the table. Euler's theorem states that if n be a positive integer and a be an integer that is co-prime to n, that, that means their GCD is 1, then we can write their relationship as a to the power phi n is congruent to 1 mod n where phi n is Euler's torsion function which we already know. So let's look at some examples. n equals 4, a equals 3, they are small numbers. So their GCD 3 comma 4 equals 1. Now calculate torsion function. So torsion function is 2. We have just calculated some and you can check in the table. Now apply Euler's theorem and that is 3 to the power 5 4 is congruent 1 mod 4. And if we place the value, then we get final 9 mod 4, that is 1. So that is correct. Now let's look at a prime number example. So n equals 7, a equals 3. Of course, they are small numbers, their GCD is 1. Now calculate torsion function of a prime number, n minus 1, that is 6. You can also check in the table. Apply Euler, Euler's theorem, and that is 3 to the power of 5, 7 is congruent 1 mod 7. And this is 729 mod 7 equals 1. That is correct. Let's look at another example. Here n is slightly bigger n composite number. So how do we calculate torsion function? Obtain its prime factor that is 3 and 11 and calculate its torsion functions individually. And finally 533 is 20. So Apply Euler's theorem that is 4 to the power 533 is congruent 1 mod 33. Calculate the value 
and mod 33 of this long number is 1. If you calculate, I have written the exact calculation, it will return 1. And that's correct. Fermat's little theorem is not a separate theorem, it's a special case of Euler's theorem. So, Euler's theorem states that n is a positive integer. We know already that in the relation a to the power phi n is congruent 1 mod n. Now, Fermat's little theorem specifies n should be a prime number in the same relation. So, we know already if n is a prime, then torsion function is n minus 1. So, Fermat's little theorem is a to the power n minus 1 is congruent 1 mod n. Now, simplify this Fermat's theorem by multiplying a on both sides. So, we get a new relation a to the power n congruent a mod n. Therefore, we can say Euler's theorem is a generalization of Fermat's little theorem. Let's look at an example n equals 7, a equals 3, the GCD is 1, same example, calculates torsion function that is 6, apply simplified Fermat's little theorem and solve this relation. So, we got 3 equals 3. That is correct. That proves the Euler's theorem. This concludes my presentation and thanks for watching my video.